Here is a look at your gap and go trades for the week of September 2nd through the 6th. I will go over price targets on the five minute time frame. I will have a gap recap from the previous week and also update the chart. Hi everyone, it's Dow on the Dow. First up is SoFi. We ended the week at $7.99. This is where we are to the north side, takes us back to the middle of the trend and the baseline at roughly 8.08. Above that, at two standard deviations and a potential take profit area, 8.46, 8.66, and 8.85. Now to the south side, takes us to negative two standard deviations and a potential buy-in area, 7.70. 7.52 and another potential buy-in area, $7.32. Looking left, there is a gap that opened up and is still in play. I'm going to just drag this out. I have no idea when or where it will touch, but that is why you have to clean up the charts. But we are moving farther away from this gap because you can see right now we are in an upward channel on the five. I will mark out this. And this line, this blue line right here is the one year price target, which is now at $8.14. And I definitely think we will hit that on Tuesday because Monday is Labor Day and the market is closed. This gap I have to change the time frame so that you can see it better. As you can tell I have tracked SoFi for a, a very long time. This gap opened up roughly on March fourth. So that gap is still in play. You can see the other gaps to the upside. They're also still in play. Option R to reset. So this gap, I will extend. That will take us up to 857. And the other gap after that will be this gap. And this gap taking us to roughly 9.93, but we are not in that channel, not in the zone, not even close, but just something to be aware of. If we do touch it and we continue to go up, that could take us to the week of September 9th, but possibly on the 12th. But as you know, this stock can whip you around like crazy. It's been all over the place. All right. And then the pink lines are my previous buy in lines and the green lines are my previous sell lines. So I just ignore that. I'll go into detail if I ever go over this stock in a separate video. But right now I'm just doing your gap and go trades. And the next one is Nike. We ended the week at $83.32, up 0.07%. To the north side, resistance and a potential take profit area, 83.72, 85.17, 85.89, and another level of resistance and a potential take profit area, which I do not think we'll get to on Tuesday would be 86.64. If we do wick that far up, you can expect a pullback as people take their profits and they run, they will lock in and they will leave. To the south side, one level of support, 82.25, many levels in between as we go up and then down. 81.55, 80.79. So as you can see, we started the week at 84. 05 and now we're at 83.32. Trading view did change out its color color scheme and this automated automatically populated and I don't know how to get it to to go back to this and keep it as that. I tried to set a new default 
title and it didn't work. So I'm going to keep my price in blue for now until I figure that part out. So looking left, this gap is still in play. So I will extend that. It'll take us down to 78.69. And for Nike, this gap to the upside at 94.27 or 31-ish range, give or take, is still in play. All right, and then we've got some gaps to the south side that are also still open, still haunt us to the south side. But you just take the closest gap at a time and it will be this one if we go south. But all day long, price will stay within negative two and two standard deviations. The outliers are your clear buy and sell signal. So if we hit this, this, or this line, that is a potential buy in. And then resistance is one level here, here, and here as well. The next one, I'm going to try to go just a little faster here and get through these. Rivian. Oh, let me see one thing about Nike. Okay, I did extend the charts. We ended the week at $14.13 right here to the middle of the trend, very close, $14.21, $14.95, $15.31, $15.70 to the south side, $13.45, $13.08, and roughly $12.69. Looking left, this gap opened up and closed the week of the 19th. So we came up, what goes up must come down. I anticipate the gap to fill to the downside and it did and it touched on Friday. This gap, it's a small one, but still in play. Note the upward trend that we are in on the five. And this one still in play as well. Let's just move that taking us down to $12. And that's all cleaned up. And then we have a gap to the north side for Rivian at $16.90, still in play. The next one, CVS. Oh, that was on the 15. Oh, I was giving you the 15 because I switched over. So ignore that because you get different buy and sell signals. Let me just give it to you again for Rivian in case, but I'll just go to two and negative two. So that's 14, 1442 and to the south side, 1350. Now CVS on the five. Fifty seven thirty four, fifty seven sixty one, fifty seven eighty eight, fifty six eighty, fifty six twenty seven, fifty five ninety nine, and I do not think we will get to this level. Fifty five seventy two. I should just delete the four standard deviations because price typically doesn't get out that far, and if it does, it will typically retreat. As far as the gaps go, this gap is still in play to the south side and there is a possibility that we close it out this upcoming week because we are still going down until I see reversal going sideways and then a bounce out to two, two, three and four standard deviations to show us there's a reversal trend, which I'm not seeing just yet. This gap to the upside will take us this big one, I will extend that, will take us to 67.70. Oops, reset that. 
And this gap to the upside, 63.19 is still in play, but we are moving farther away from those targets. But really, we just need to rip off the Band-Aid, close out, so this gap to the south side will not haunt us any further. Yeah, that is the only gap I'm trapping, tracking to the south side. Oh, look at this. Oh, that did close. All right, and that's all I see for right now. This is the only ticker, Chipotle, that hit the target that I have been tracking. So congratulations if you played that one as a gap fill. First, your targets to the north side, 5631, 5660, 5689, middle of the trend and support from where we are, 5573, another level of support, 5515, 5486, 5456. So this gap closed, I have to clean this up. Again, I just extend it, not knowing what it's gonna to touch, and so it was over here. I, I had it over here, but it really touched right there. So that took us up to roughly 55.83. Delete that, no longer in play to the upside. So when I was tracking it, I saw this massive fall to the downside, and then I thought, oh, that's an opportunity for a reversal whenever that happens to the upside. And finally, it did on Tuesday. And that opened up basically on the 13-ish. And that took a couple of weeks there. Why is this? Oh, I forgot. I took out this line. There's like a gaping, glaring... hole right here. There, I need to put that back. So I was tracking it basically for four weeks, it looks like. Three and four. Or did I start it here? Something like that. So this gap is done. The one-year price target, I looked at this and it shows $63.12, which represents a 12.55% from where we are. And we are a long ways off. This thing will whip you around. They lost their CEO. He went to Starbucks, so who knows what's going to happen and how they're gonna get people excited about this ticker. But note this gap right here closed. We gapped up and then to the downside. So that's done. I will put another ticker in to replace that at the end of this video. Boeing on the five here. We ended the week at 173.74. To the upside takes us to roughly 174.92, 176.02, and 177.14. Again, don't think it's gonna get there. That's just too far out from where we are. 172.69, and 168.22. So this gap is still haunting us to the downside, taking us down to 169.01. Nothing really opened up this week to write home about. I don't, I don't even see a little one, but if you flip it to different time frames, you'll see different things. And this gap to the north side, still in play, taking us to 179.26. This gap closed as well as that one. And then after that, we've got 1 to 198.55-ish. All right. Oh, let me move. This, I'll just leave this right here. The next one is Neo. We ended the week at 4.05.
the, the high for the week was 421. See that right there? Well, it says 421, but 421 for me is right about there. Anyway, so congrats if you made some money off of NEO buying in here, your clear buy signal, your clear sell signal. Of course, you have to track the same stocks over and over again, or you have to set your buy orders or your sell limits to catch these moves because I track many tickers for myself. Four oh four is where we ended to the north side. Four twenty six, four thirty eight, four fifty. The baseline and the middle of the trend. What I'm going to do is draw this middle line out, and I'm going to track it. Let's change the color. I'm going to change this to yellow. Okay, that's going to be my baseline. If we continue to go up, this it'll follow this line, but if we go sideways, I will anticipate this to be my base. Actually, I will change it to this color, just so I can kind of see in the big picture. Let's change it to that line. So that will be roughly 402, four, excuse me, 378, 365, 353. As far as the gaps go, I will clean up this gap. This one touched on Wednesday and opened up roughly on the 14th. So this took us down to 374. No longer a threat to our account to the south side. There are plenty of other threats, just not this gap. Now this one is still in play, taking us down to roughly 370. All right, what is going on right here? So this gap down to 395 actually touched right here. Oh wait, it touched right here. Again, remember I just extend, then I have to go back and clean it up. So I will leave it right about there to 395 to the south side. Oh wait, no, I take that back. It's here. It touched right here on the 28th. As this gap, this, price fell, I should say, right there. All right, that is done. No longer a threat. Made it down to support and voila, we bounced right back up. And we gapped up, so I anticipate now a fill to the south side, so we'll be taking a little bit of a breather possibly. And that gap is in play for this week. And that will take us to 395. And what about anything else? So this gap to the north side at 468. I will drag this over. And then we've got this one. Not in the channel, not in the zone, not even close, but I'll just drag it out anyway. Okay, and then to the south side, am I track? I don't think I'm tracking anything else, so that's good. The next one, Tesla. We ended the week at 1374. Let's move this out of the way. So to the north side, 1379, 1391, and 1403. Baseline, middle of the trend. 
roughly 1354. 1329, 1317, and 1305. As far as the gaps that I need to clean up, let's start with this one. So we gapped up, so I anticipate a fill down, and we touched right here, and that was on Tuesday to the south side, roughly 1356. That was this price tag. And then this gap we gapped up, so I anticipate a gap down. So this one is still in play. And then what is happening with this one? Oh, this one touched at 13.30. See, and it opened up roughly on the 15th. So we touched to the south side right here for a gap play to the south side at 13.30. Dot, oops. Command Z and delete. So that's done, that's done. What is going, oh, look at this. Well, that was the previous week, so we touched here, so that one's done also right there. Nice. This is going to take us to $14.37. We have other gaps to the north side to fill, but one gap at a time. We're not in the channel, not in the zone yet, even for this one. So just to keep that in mind, 1437 to the upside and nothing to the downside. And you can just predict the downside if you do the standard deviations. Tesla, let me get a drink of water. So for Tesla, we ended the week at 214.11 up 3.8% to the north side, 215.03, Support, at least one level of support. There are many, 210.32, 2 205.51, 203.11, Two hundred and seventy-five. So as far as this gap to the downside, still in play for this upcoming week, but fortunately we are in an, up, in an upward trend. So moving farther away from that. I guess it is farther because that's distance. I said further last time. So this closed out right here on Friday. Okay, and then trying to hit support and then bounced off that area. And this one, I have to move some of these just to see this chart better. Okay, see this gap? Oh no, that's not a gap. So we touched this level right here to the downside on Tuesday, taking us down to 219, delete, delete. So that's no longer a threat to our account. So this was Friday, finish that. Okay. Oh no, I'm wrong. It, that touched right here on Monday, there. That looks better. And then we've got this gap taking us to 246.23, not in the channel, not in the zone, not even close, just something to be aware of to the upside. Now the next one is Intel. I do have a, um, a sell order, but I'm going to change it because I had it here. And now I think I want to just leave it here 
at 2362. Change it to 2362 for myself. All right, here we go. 2259, 2310, 2361, support, 2154, 2052, 2001, and roughly 1950 as far as the gaps go. This gap is still in play for the upcoming week. Notice the upward channel we are in. So I will clean up this gap first. This one actually touched on Tuesday. That took us down to 1994. That gap opened up on the 15th. Delete that. So that's cleaned up, looks good. Delete. Now this gap down to 2012, where did this touch? Oh, look at this. I extended it out not knowing and boom, we gapped down out of the gate on Monday and closed this out. Even though that's terrible to see, I don't like to see these tickers go down, but you got to close out these gaps so they don't haunt us. All right. And that one already closed to the south side at roughly 1994. And then this one was that gap. So that's done at 20, what was it, 12. Now this gap opened up, so we are still in it to the downside. So we are going up. I mean, you cannot keep going without consolidating, basing, going down to go back up again, possibly. So that that is an opportunity to pick up if you are trying to do a day trade, waiting patiently to get down here or, or making an entry. And that will take us to roughly, oops, 2013 to the downside. That one again, still in play. And this gap closed out previously and I did not catch that. Oh no, it didn't, I'm sorry, to the upside. It has to touch up here. And it did on Friday the 30th. This gap has been in play since basically the 20th of August. So congrats if you made some money there. Okay, so that's cleaned up. This 2142 is a previous sell line of mine. And I do have some down here for myself and for my mom. So I have to figure out what to do for her. I'm not in these trades as long for myself, but for her, I do keep it. Okay, we've got a gap that takes us to 29, roughly 04-ish. And that is not in the channel, not in the zone, not even close, just something to be aware of, the potential to the upside. And that one looks like it needs to be clean. That looks kind of ugly, like it went out of the border. I like to stay within the border and make it clean to the downside right there. Okay. Do I have to clean up anything else? Nope. I'll just delete this one, so I have to delete it later, but that will take us down. Okay, because I got rid of Chipotle, I only put this ticker, I only put tickers into my gap and go. Once they hit that specific gap I'm tracking, then I remove it. So I'm removing CMG, I'm, I'm going to put back in Apple. I have looked at Apple in the past for a gap and go trade. I'll show you very quickly on the daily. All these lines were my previous weeks that I tracked it for a gap and go. And look at that. We went as high as 230.40. 230.40. Oh, that's within the day's range. The 52 week range was 237.23. But 
had you kept track of this and did this for a long-term trade, you've, you would have done very well too. And I'm deep into Apple, deep, deep, deep. So I am riding a very great high for myself. All right, back to the five minute. Oops, that was the 15. Uh, we ended the week at 229 even. Again, I have to change this because something happened to trading view. Oops. Get right on. There we go. To the north side. 229.75, 233.05, 234.71, and 226.41. 226.35, 224.69, 223.40. This will take us up. Oops, what happened there? I don't know. Let's do that again. That will take us to 234.60. And this will be the only gap I will be tracking for this gap and go trade. And even if we go down, but we close this out. I will stop tracking this because I don't track the gaps to the south side. You're on your own for that one. Taking us down to 222.33 roughly. And then here's another opportunity to go short. But right now we are in an upward channel on the five upward trend. Making higher highs but you will get different buy and sell signals on the different time frames. So definitely take a look at that. Oh, I will wrap it up now. That is a look at your gap and go trades for the week of September 2nd, 2nd through the 6th. And you know what I want to do? One other thing, just very quickly so you can see this. Witness me. That comes off of the movie. What was it? Furiosa was the prequel. Darn, I forget the name of it, but I just watched it. It was entertaining. I live, I die, I live again, or something like that. It's such a great line. All right, so I will, I'm gonna get rid of the magnet. So this is the middle of the trend. You know, I think I do have to change the color on this because it looks too close to that other yellow that I'm tracking. So this will be the middle of the trend for this week of, this, of September 6th through the 6th. I'm just curious where we end up for the end of the week. So this is one way for me to see and block out, oops. Every single Monday, the trend. So I can kind of see the range that we could possibly be in. I'm gonna change that color, get rid of that, make this yellow. Do it again here. All right, do one more. And Rivian. All right, 
Now that does it for me. If there is a ticker that you would like me to go over or to add into the gap and go trades, I am always looking for different ones to switch out. So yeah, have a great trading week.